Welcome back to another episode from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Doc Jen. And I'm Dr. Dom. And we are going to talk about warm ups. What does the research say? What kind of warm up is most beneficial for the body? How long is it supposed to be? Let's get into it. Now, before we dive into all that goes into warm ups, what you really should be doing, what we recommend ourselves as physical therapists, we want to make sure that you don't miss out on any future videos because we have a ton of information here. Not only do we discuss topics like this and pain and diagnoses and all of that together, but we also have videos just on mobility exercises or exercises that help plantar fasciitis or whatever you have going on. So don't forget to hit subscribe. And if you have any questions about other things as you listen or things are popping up, let us know in the comments because that's how we understand how to create videos that you're looking for. Warm ups. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is something that everyone talks about. Everyone knows or thinks it's good to do a warm up before you exercise, before you work out, before you go into a competition. But what's the best warm up? Right. <laughs> what's the best way to warm up? What are the best exercises or protocol? for me to do. We're going to do our best to kind of break down what we've seen is most valuable. And really when it comes down to it, when people are looking at, okay, well, what kind of warm up should I be doing? It's because they're trying to focus on injury prevention. We're trying to focus on how do I not get injured in this workout? How do I make sure that I take care of my body so I can continue to work out or continue to do the sport how that I, I love? feel better when I'm doing the workout itself? <laughs> right. And the reality is there's so many factors that come into injury prevention. Oh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. a warm up isn't going to be the standalone yeah. thing that's going to prevent injury. But we can look at the physiological effects that we're intending to do for a warm up and start to understand, OK, what's most beneficial and how can I maximize those physiological benefits to really help maximize what I'm going to do in the workout? In general, I mentioned there's benefits to warming up the tissues and the muscles and warming up the core body temperature and the benefits that they spoke about were better turnover of your ATP which is essentially the mm -hmm. fuel for the cell and that physiologically makes a lot of sense if the muscle is warmer you're going to be able to produce or replenish ATP stores faster and also utilize ATP st um, stores better you're going to have better what's called cross bridging of the muscles which is essentially how our muscles crawl along each other to contract and relax. Mm -hmm. They're gonna have better nerve conduction velocity. You're gonna have better utilization of the oxygen. So like your VO2 max, or not VO2 max, but your, your oxygen uptake at the muscle is gonna be more efficient. So better delivery to the muscles themselves to do the workout. So all of these physiologic benefits of warming up locally, but also like systemically raising your core body temperature can have benefits for the performance. Which we know we've done a podcast previously on heat and using hot packs and doing saunas and all that kind of stuff. And what is most beneficial for actually improving core body temperature, which isn't the passive treatments. Mm -mm. It's not the, the heat packs and the ultrasounds. It is actually doing active movement. So overall, looking at a lot of these studies, they're showing that passive warmups like these using all those tools aren't going to be as effective as just actively warming up the body. You're looking at warming up the body aerobically for at least less than 15 minutes, which 15 minutes for me sounds like so long. But at least if you did a little bit of aerobic capacity, so you're walking around, you're jogging, you're biking, you're getting something to kind of raise that inner core temperature. It's starting to get the blood flowing, really. Yeah. I mean, uh, getting the blood pumping getting around the body going. is going to make your body work more and it's going to raise the temperature a little bit. And again, when we're looking at these studies, sometimes they're basing these recommendations off somebody going out and going for an hour run or a long bike ride. It's all activity dependent. If you're going to be going into a yoga session or if you're going to be doing something that's more low impact activity, you're not going to need to sit on a row machine for 15 minutes right. to warm up for that. Exactly. And then they recommended doing like four to five activation sprints, they say, but things that are specific to the activity that you're going to be doing. Which it tells me by, by them saying sprints, <laughs> they're probably talking to a running population in right, this study. Right, like soccer or football or something where they're going to be running and using their body at a fuller capacity. Yeah. Where if you're not going to be going into sprinting or doing, you know, a little bit more dynamic movement, then you're acting 
activation exercises are probably going to be more like can I do a series of squats or lunges or deadlifts hmm. that have lower intensity of the exercise that I'm going to be doing, but I'm still mimicking the movements that I'm going to be doing within the workout. The most important thing is it's mimicking the movements that you're doing. It's getting the body warmed up mm -hmm. and that's going to start to prepare you for whatever exercise you're doing. In some cases, when we're running short on time, it's like we just use the first sets yeah. of the workout that we're doing yeah. as our warm up. We might use half the weight. We might use a significantly lower amount of weight, do a few extra reps, but we're starting to load the muscles. We're starting to get blood pumping through the body mm -hmm. to warm up and we're warm up directly using the movements that we're gonna do for our workout. So there's all sorts of ways that you can adapt this to your specific exercise, time constraints, space constraints. What we know is beneficial is warm up the body a little bit and do some of the movements that you're gonna do in the exercise. And when we wanna talk about injury prevention, there was a pretty significant sized study done with children, mm -hmm. specifically playing soccer or football, um, mm -hmm. the European football, and they used this very thought out warm up protocol and it did show a significant decrease in injuries in the group of kids that were using the warm-up protocol yeah. versus the kids that were not and where this is beneficial to what we're talking about now is that they used a lot of the same principles we're talking mm -hmm. about now they got the kids warmed up aerobically and then they started doing a lot more activity specific drills like sprints and agility type drills mm -hmm in a more controlled setting before sending them out on the pitch to play a game. What we're trying to prepare is the brain, really, the brain to that muscle connection to understand the movement and the load that it's going to be taking on. Especially if you've been <laughs> working all day, you're sitting, you're not moving as much, and then you go right into a workout, it's going to be more beneficial to start getting the circulation going, to start mimicking the movements. Maybe I've been sitting, I haven't squatted past parallel <laughs> at getting in and out of my chair, in and out of my car. So I'm gonna wanna do a little bit more, you know, yeah. movement within those joints prior to lifting a little bit heavier of a load. For example, going into motherhood and it's like, if I'm gonna be picking a baby up and down from the ground or putting them, bending over and putting them into their crib or bassinet, am I doing deadlifts? Am I doing the movements specific to the activities that I'm gonna be doing? That is the best way that we see in general to prepare the body to prevent injury. And so that's exactly what we're trying to do with the warm up. When it comes to mobility, a lot of people wanna ask about stretching prior to working out. And we've heard it be demonized a lot. And though we can see like a two to 5% decrease in performance directly after passive stretching. So I'm just going to take a strap and passively stretch my hamstrings, or I'm just going to take my arm across and passively stretch. I mean, we see this a lot, right? Yeah. In kind of, kind of aerobic type classes is just this passive type stretching. If you do passive stretching and then you do an active warm up prior to your workout, there is no change in what that means to your workout, your performance, or your injury prevention. If you desire like getting your mobility in prior to your workout, you can still do that effectively as long as you make sure you warm up properly prior to your workout. And this is where I hate when people try to start these online arguments saying, I know, oh, you should never stretch before you work out. I say, Nuances. Yeah. <laughs> First off, off because like never say never, yeah. because they see research saying passive warmups versus active warmups, and passive warmups might have negative effects versus active warmups, which are better or the best. But again, if you feel good, I know that if I'm going to be squatting, I have ankle restrictions, I have hip restrictions, mm -hmm. and I know if I do some more passive type stretching, it might help me open up some of those restrictions I have. But then I immediately move into a more active style yeah. or an active variation of that stretch to load into it a little bit. And then just like we've been talking up, I do a bit of the movement to start exactly. gradually increasing that load. And that's where I feel best. And I'm not going to let somebody on Instagram <laughs> tell me I'm an idiot for doing that because I feel good when I do it. Well, and what we look at too, when we're looking at passive stretching, actually over time, you can see that there's an increase in tensile strength of the tendons, which is the same thing that you get from strength training and you're loading the tissue. We're still putting load on the tissue. It's a different type of load. It's a stretch. It's more passive, but it's still a load for the tissue. Yeah. So that's still going to be giving some feedback to the brain of a different range and a new movement that is preparing for the movement ahead. Mm -hmm. So 
I don't think it's a bad thing, just how we're using it. What we recommend now for warm up, I'll go into like a little live example of how we use it. So you're warming up to do squats. Sure, you're warming up to do a strength workout, a lower body strength workout. Yeah, lower body strength workout. In general, make sure that you're not just going from sitting on the couch or sitting on in a desk or your car for hours. You know, you're gonna do a little jogging in place, a, a bike, a rower, something to get your-, your Playing hide and seek with Kai That's and Dante gonna say for five to ten minutes because yes. i am sweating after that exactly and this is us running around the corner to hide from our dog she comes and finds us and then we chase her down with our little baby boy yeah <laughs> and yeah doing that for 10 minutes it's gonna get the heart rate going <laughs> i mean if you're cleaning you're doing dishes you're doing like you're doing something active and getting the blood flowing that's that can count. I'm going to say that's going to count as your right. aerobic warm up prior to getting into your workout, because a lot of times as busy parents, that's the one thing that's holding us back. Well, if I have to do five to 10 minutes of this, then I have to do five to 10 minutes of some activation stuff. Then I have to go into like it yeah. becomes this thing that feels daunting and something we're never going to get to. So we want to take that away. Well, we were doing research on warm-ups and cool-downs kind of at the same time. Yeah. And the warm-up said 15 minutes or less of an aerobic thing and then about five minutes of these activation sprints or increasing yeah. intensity exercises. And the cool-down said no more than 30 minutes of, yeah. you know, cool-down activity. I'm like 15 minutes plus five minutes plus 30 minutes. Like we're at 50 minutes already. And they I'm haven't done with even, my workout. I, I've, I've done two workouts. <laughs> like My workouts tend to be between 25 and 30 minutes right now. So again, it's very specific to the person. Also, if you're going into a powerlifting or Olympic lifting competition, doing the dishes and walking around, you probably know, with not your, gonna be best. probably not going to be your best warm up. Yeah. But again, you're in a much different place than we are for the workouts we're doing right now. Yeah. So after doing that warm up, then we want to get into the gym and start loading up the muscles. We talked about doing mobility. Okay, if you wanna do some mobility, great. I would start with, for myself, a 90-90 hip exercise, but do active switches. So yeah. I'm actively loading those, and then you kind of sit up and step forward into a lunge mm -hmm. and step back. So again, we're loading those hip muscles through all the range of motion and then throw a bar on or depending on the weight that you're going to be shooting for, for your active working sets, aim for 40 to 60% of that mm -hmm. and do a warm up set or two. Yeah. Sometimes I even just like take the, the bar and just do like a, a little bit of a hold, kind of rock into my ankles and then come back up, you know, and just like getting that pause squat, getting that, that brain used to going into that with a little bit of load on my back mm -hmm. is kind of good. If you're going to be doing a little bit more dynamic movement, sometimes I will do a quick step up. So I'm doing a step mm -hmm. up onto something, but I'm moving a little bit faster within my body or I will step up on something and jump and land. So I'm working on that eccentric control of mm -hmm. that landing. There's ways that you can, okay, what is, am I gonna be doing jumps? Am I gonna be doing some dynamic activity? Am I gonna just be doing deadlifts running, and biking. squats? <laughs> yeah, so can I do deadlifts at a lower capacity, kind of exactly what Dom was talking about, or even taking a band around your neck and doing good mornings, but that mimics the same hinge pattern. In general, you don't have to be doing 10 to 15 minutes on a bike. You don't need to be doing side clams for, <laughs> for <activation laughs> three sets work, of yeah. 15. There are ways that you can f squeeze in your mobility and activation in a way that is going to be mimicking the movements and the workout that you're going to be doing. And hopefully when you start understanding how movements can kind of mimic each other and how to feel different areas within your body, because I think that's what a lot of people have trouble is like, well, I can't feel my glutes, so I need to do some activation exercises or I can't feel this or my quads always take over. It's like, well, then what can we be doing that's a little different in your warm up set that we can feel a different result? And sometimes that can be I'm gonna lift my toes on an elevated surface when I'm doing light deadlifts so that now I'm forcing my body to hinge a little bit more, get into my glutes and hamstrings, and I'm not into my quads anymore. We could work on different setups, and this is, I'm like talking, this is everything we do in Gen Health. This is what we're gonna be doing a little bit more in the new Move to Improve Challenge that's gonna be coming out this year. Ways that we can be smart about integrating active mobility, integrating a warm up set prior to your workout and still be getting everything done within 30 minutes, everything. We'll have an episode coming out next week on cool downs yeah. <laughs> to talk a little bit about two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> I talk about what we think about having effective cool downs to add into this whole routine. 
Thanks for coming and joining us for that chat on warmups. Hopefully you learned something. If you have any thoughts, are there warmups that you love that we didn't talk about? Comment below. Also comment below with other topics that you might want us to do PT Pearls on in the future. Before you go, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any of the future videos that we come out with. Thank you.